Now, first on BBC One and the BBC HD channel, a PR disaster in the big top. audience. There are two people in and the older one has nodded off. <laughs> yes, but those two people have paid good money to see this show, so what are we going to give them? Their money back so we can go to bed. <laughs> a wonderful performance. Yeah, we're going to blow them away like uh, friendly dynamite. <laughs> I can't go on again. I can't make two people laugh. You can't make one person laugh, but it's never stopped you before. <laughs> That's not fair, Erasmus. It's stopped him loads of times, hasn't it, Geoffrey? Remember that children's party when you stormed out because they kept throwing darts at you? Yes, and I threw them right back at them, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Don't think of them as any old audience. Think of them as two very special people. Imagine one of them is your mum. Mother, uh, I'm sorry I performed badly. Please, uh, do not beat me again, I beg you! <laughs> <laughs> OK, Boyko, maybe not your mum. Imagine it's the Queen, then. Uh, Your Majesty, I'm sorry I performed badly. Please, uh, do not beat me again, I beg you! <laughs> well, the Queen of my country is a very cruel woman. <laughs> uh, one time, a clown did not make her laugh. She had him taken out and shot. Could we arrange a tour of your country? <laughs> OK, look, let's just imagine there's no one in the audience. There's no one in the audience. <laughs> They've gone home. They said it was a nice show, but they felt a bit depressed, Lizzie. Right, that's it. We've got to get more people in. We need to get more creative publicity ideas, so I'm issuing you all with a challenge. You've got one week to get us on the front page of the local paper. Easy. And this time not for arson. <laughs> not so easy. <laughs> now we part the mists between the worlds of the living and the dead. David, have you made a connection? One box for yes, two box for no. <coughs> He's through. David, do you have a message for Sandra? One box for good news, two for bad news. <coughs> it's bad news, <laughs> indeed. One box for serious bad news, two for not so serious. <coughs> it's serious bad news. <coughs> you the first time, David. <laughs> what is it? An illness? He can't say, can he, look? He's a dog. <laughs> All he can say, it involves a roof collapsing. Oh, my goodness. You want to go somewhere with a nice soft roof, like a tent. Circus Maestro in town every night this week. <laughs> he says, bring five people with you and your luck will instantly change for the better. All right, thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. David, what is your fee for today's reading? One bark for one pound, two for two pounds. <coughs> two pounds. He hasn't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> Local circus in bogus psychic shame. Well done, Georgie. It's right on the front page. <laughs> what have you got to say for yourself? I'm as angry as you are, Lizzie. I had no idea who's making that stuff up. Perhaps I should have specified that I wanted more positive publicity, like Boyko's effort here. Yes, uh, on Saturday I ran a high wire between the stands at Stoke City Football Club and walked back and forth above the pitch six times. Hey, you could have heard a pin drop. <laughs> That's because they weren't playing at home, Boyko. <laughs> Has anyone told you my PR stunt, Lizzie? No. Jeffrey's been making his nuisance phone calls. No, no, wind up phone calls, love. Wind ups. <laughs> what it is, is I phone someone up and pretend to be someone I'm not. A funny clown? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, I pull people's legs a bit and we all have a laugh, and then I tell them who I really am. An unfunny clown. <laughs> and then I say, come down to Circus Maestro if you want more chuckles. <laughs> Jeff. The emergency services do not appreciate this kind of call. It's not just the emergency services. I phoned a minicab firm, the anti-terrorist hotline. Ooh, Andrew Sachs. And who did I catch you phoning the other day? 
The Samaritans. Uh, that's something different, look. Was ever so funny, Geoffrey? The things you were saying? No, please. How nobody likes you and your life's been an empty, worthless sham. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff, you are king of the ripticklers. <laughs> Thanks, Bonko. I don't suppose you've come up with a PR idea, Erasmus? I have, actually. Pulled a few strings. Got us the opening ceremony at the 2012 London Olympics. Sorry? I got us the opening ceremony at the 2012 London Olympics. No, sorry, I thought you just said you got us the opening ceremony of the 2012 London Olympics. I have. You have what? Got us the opening ceremony <laughs> at the 2012 London Olympics. Right, what have you done? Here's the official letter. But this says... I've got us the opening ceremony at the 2012 London Olympics. Oh, that's incredible! What, are you blackmailing a member of the committee over some terrible, dirty little secret or something? Oh, you are. I suppose you disapprove of blackmail. Want me to call the whole thing off? God, no. This is our big chance to prove to the world that Circus Maestro is fantastic and will be so great, they'll be glad they asked us. How can that be blackmail? Because I've got pictures of him with a goose. <laughs> You're quite partial to a bit of goose, aren't you, Geoffrey? <laughs> we need to think of a theme for the ceremony. Each of you needs to think of something quintessentially British, something that encapsulates life in Britain today. Binge drinking? <laughs> Childhood obesity. What about the Lake District? That's lovely. How are we supposed to recreate the Lake District as a circus act? Oh, I see what you mean, silly me. What about Cheddar Gorge? <laughs> OK, look, I'm going to go and tell the press about the Olympics. I want you lot to think of some ideas. Remember, no idea is too big, no idea is too stupid. David says he wants to sing a duet with Bridgian. <laughs> Not that stupid. <laughs> you know what this means? We're even more successful than when Dad was in charge. True. Yes, he had his TV shows, Raw Variety, Sunday Night in the London Palladium. Crime Watch. But we get to take Circus Maestro to the Olympics. And it's all thanks to one person, me. And with no thought of personal gain. I mean, what's in this for you? Nothing. Unless they gave you some sort of development grant, which they probably did, which was probably quite a lot which you've probably taken and spent all on yourself, leaving with absolutely no budget to prepare a globally spectacular event. You git! I couldn't help, Lizzie. I, you know I'm no good at holding on to money. How much did you blow? 20 grand. 20 grand? In my defence, it was a hell of a night. <laughs> get me my money back. Uh, there's a bit of a problem. See, I didn't spend it so much on things you can return, more on services. I'd like to return the services, but they charge me another 20 grand. So let me get this straight. You're telling me you spent our entire Olympic fund on high-class escorts? They weren't high-class. There were just a lot of them. I don't care. I want my 20 grand back. We can't do the ceremony without it. Your dad's got some spare money. Has he? Yeah. Before he went to prison, he put all his cash into two boxes and buried them. Brilliant. Where? He wouldn't tell me where the first one was. He was worried that I'd dig it up and spend it on dodgy birds. What about the other one? He told me where that was. And? I dug it up and spent it on dodgy birds. <laughs> well, that's no good to us, is it? And we'll never find the first one unless we go to every field we've ever visited and dig it up. Lizzie, come. We have created a spectacular performance for the opening ceremony. There you go. Who needs money when you've got inspiration? Well, if this isn't inspired, you can take that shovel and dig a hole. Right. And then you can lie in the hole while I fill it in again. <laughs> right. I can't wait for this. Good evening. We call this routine Hope and Glory. Twenty. Twelve. Twenty. Twelve. Helen, you're doing it the wrong way. I you're doing it as a twelve to you. You're doing it as a twelve to the audience. Twenty. Twelve. Twenty. Twelve. Twenty. Oh, I'm Twelve. Gonna, it's gone out now. Twelve. <laughs> yeah, go Team GB. Any thoughts? Well, the Beijing Opening Olympics had 17,000 people, superbly choreographed, surrounded by the greatest pyrotechnic display ever engineered by man. We've got two clowns with sparklers and a dog in a bowler hat. Realistically, by 2012, the dog might be dead. Go away, Jeff. 
If you'd like an alternative, Lizzie, Jeffrey's written a stand-up comedy routine with an international theme. Oh, my God. Well, that's the thing about the Chinese Olympics, isn't it? Four years later, you want another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, though, seriously. Have you seen the biceps on them East Germans? And that's just the women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff, you win the gold medal for laughter every time. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just off to dig up the entire county. <laughs> Anyone in from Zimbabwe? Another word, Lizzie. No, you can't. Go away. I've got a simple solution to the whole thing. Really? Kill Jeff. <laughs> That's your answer to everything. Ticket sales are down. Kill Jeff. Ooh, where are my keys? Kill Jeff. I just think it might work, that's all. Yes, it would solve a lot of problems, but it's not going to get us our 20 grand back. Well, it might, cos if Jeff was dead, then your dad would get a day out of prison to go to the funeral, and while he was out, he could dig up the cash. What are you saying? That we should fake Uncle Jeff's death? No, I'm saying you should kill him. <laughs> but you're the boss, so fine, let's fake it. No, Erasmus, I don't want my dad coming to the rescue. I want to prove to him that I can do this by myself without him. OK, uh, we have a new opening ceremony. David barks the national anthem, while Jeff and Helen act out the life story of Prince Charles and Lady Camilla. It's cheap to perform, and the nudity is very tasteful. <laughs> OK, let's get Dad out of jail. <laughs> no way. No blinking way. Oh, come on. It's only a fake death. Go on holiday for a week, come back, be alive again. But why should I be the dead one? Because they'll only let Dad out of prison for a family funeral, and you're his brother. You're his daughter. You die. Yes, but I have to be alive to make the sandwiches. Unless you want to make them. <laughs> no. Right then. I think it might be quite fun to fake your own death, Geoffrey. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You know, get to hear what people say about you after you've gone. What do you mean? Like, tributes? Yes, yes, of course. Tributes. I'd pay tribute. I'd say Jeff was a... nice man. And a good clown. Say genius. Genius. A genius clown. And there'd be a book of condolence for people to sign. And there'd be obituaries in the papers. And, and you'd have to name the circus after me. What, Geoffrey the Circus? No. <laughs> circus Plonky. A legacy of fun. How will you tell the others, Lizzie? Oh, I'll just tell them Jeff's passed away. Then after the funeral, I'll tell them the truth. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to practice being dead right now. <laughs> So, Auntie Helen. Hello. Am I asking too much of you to act as if Jeff's died? No, I don't think so. I mean, I'd be sad for a bit, obviously, and then I'd move on. Maybe go to college and learn a new skill. Cake decorating's always appealed. And as for romance, there's this fellow I've been chatting to online. <laughs> I mean, it's all perfectly innocent, of course, but I get the impression he'd like to take things a bit further. <laughs> yes, look, could I just remind you that Jeff isn't actually dead? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's true. No, I cannot believe Jeff is dead. Why? What have you heard? He had so much more laughter to give. And I never told him that I loved him. To be fair, you told him every day. Quickly! We must fill every orifice of his body with salt to prevent the evil spirits from entering. <laughs> or his soul will not be at rest. No, Boyko. I think it's worth a try. <laughs> the memorial service is here next Friday and my father will be released from prison to attend. Really? Your dad's coming out? Yeah, that's not a problem, is it? On the contrary, Lizzie. Your father and I have always been very close. We plan to get married. Is that when he handed himself into the police? <laughs> we said we'd pick up when his sentence was over. There hasn't been anyone since. Are you sure? It's quite a big prison. <laughs> he said when he returned, the two of us would run this circus together. I run this circus. Temporarily, yes, but when he gets by... I will still run this circus. Look, I don't want Uncle Jeff's funeral turned into some kind of power struggle. Today is about mourning and sadness and nothing else. Hello, everybody. Beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> this well is a very sad one. <laughs> Auntie Helen, are you sure you should be here? 
Yes, Geoffrey's the one who's dead, not me. I have got that right, haven't I? <laughs> OK, let's wrap it up there. Thank you very much, everyone. Where has Uncle Jeff gone away to? He hasn't gone anywhere. He's in the caravan googling himself. What do you mean? You know, I can't find a single obituary on the internet. Oh, Uncle Jeff, for God's sake, someone might see you. Yes, and that would spoil Shh. your entire plan, wouldn't it? So, I thought this would be a good time to talk about the funeral arrangements. After all, you can't say funeral without saying fun. Yes, you can. Funeral. Not if you pronounce it funeral. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because I say so. Right, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Just please stay dead. Here's the eulogy. The eulogy? Yes, I've highlighted the parts where you start crying. <laughs> <laughs> What you doing, Lizzie? I just want Dad to feel more at home. Then stick a bucket in the corner and lock him up for ten years. <laughs> he should have arrived by now. <laughs> Hello? It's the prison. But you've got to let them attend. It's his brother's funeral. What do you mean, the death sentence? Uncle Jeff, is that you? Still funny from beyond the grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to wish I hadn't put so much time on his hands. Where are you, you little tinker? Dad? My God. I've missed that cheeky little face. Come here! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nicky. I bet that cell seemed really big and empty after I left, didn't it? Not really. They replaced you with two arsonists and a strangler, so it's quite snug. It's good to see you, Dad. Yeah, whack the kettle on. There's a good girl. So, fill us in on business. How much profit are you taking? I'm taking almost all of it, Nicky. <laughs> nice one, you little crook. Dad, you do remember that you actually left me in charge? Yes, I do, Penguin. You were the right man for the job. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Yes, Erasmus is more creative. He's got better contacts. He's more intelligent. But he'd have probably sold the tent and spent all the money on dodgy birds. I probably would. Oh, look at that. There's my little girl, back when she was tiny. But that's an elephant. Yes, I love that leathery-faced girl. <laughs> she was like the daughter I never had. But what about me? Can you stand on your hind legs and fire ping-pong balls into a crowd? She could try. <laughs> Broke my heart when she died. Still, we got a lovely umbrella stand out of it. Could you take his cuffs off? I could not. I'm authorised to use all force necessary to detain the inmate. What, are you armed? This isn't America, miss. I'm not issued with guns. Oh, for goodness. So I had to buy this myself on the internet. A taser. Non-lethal, but it'll bring him down at 50 paces. How lovely. Don't worry, Penguin, you'll get your money. Oh, hello then, Nicholas. I thought it was you. Helen, <gasps> foxy as ever. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am very sorry for your loss. Loss? Of my brother. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Yes, he's dead, you know. He's quite dead. Yes, still, life must go on. Oh, well, not for Geoffrey. His flesh will be starting to decay by now. <laughs> Remember me, Nicholas. Georgie girl, still tucking those ankles behind your head. No, I do a dog act now. <laughs> Look, it's lovely to catch up and everything, but let's not forget the real reason we're all here. Uncle Jeff's funeral! <gasps> He's dead, you know. <laughs> Who's this, Auntie Helen? This is Peter. He's the man I was telling you about off the internet. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could say this is our first date. <laughs> date? Auntie Helen, this is your husband's funeral. Do you not think that's a little bit inappropriate? Yes, but we're going on to a club afterwards. <laughs> Can I just remind you again that Jeff isn't dead? Yeah, but the way I see it, Lizzie, he's dead for now. You know, I've got to get on and live my life. <laughs> oh, he looks so lovely lying there. Where? What's he doing in there? <laughs> Sorry, it's the... Grieving, you know. <laughs> I thought we agreed a closed and empty casket. I'm sorry, Lizzie. insisted on being here. I mean, don't forget, it is his funeral. <laughs> Excuse me, I just need to nip over and give him some grief. <laughs> what the hell 
don't think I missed my final gig, did you? I did everything you asked for. The squirty flower, the eulogy, the lot. Don't worry, I won't sit up and spoil things for you. God, I've got a good mind to close this casket and bury you right now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And welcome to Plonky the Clown's funeral. <laughs> oh, Jeff. The fairies will be chuckling in heaven tonight. There were a number of reasons to mourn Plonky the Clown. Number one. Plonky was the people's clown. He was the clown of hearts. <laughs> Number two. Number 115. Jeff was a comic genius. Up there with Chaplin, Buster Keaton and Jim Davidson. <laughs> and now, would you please stand for Uncle Jeff's favourite hymn, Erasmus. Very moving choice, Penguin. I must nip outside for a cry. You come in, sunshine. Oh, sorry, you can't. Mercer, come on now, joke's over. What joke? Back in the day, half my act was escapology, and the other half was pickpocketing. Taser. Keys and oh look, I got your watch as well. You can't do this. No, we have not buried Jeff. His soul is not yet at rest. You can bury him later, mate. I'm off. Oh, come on, Peter. Let's go back to the caravan. Mercer, you come back. <laughs> I'm so sorry about this. It's only for a short while. Oh look, have some popcorn while you're waiting. You regret this? You come back. You're all guilty of false imprisonment, except whoever releases me. There's a reward. Five hundred pounds cash. Anyone? <laughs> Job done. I've left the hole open in case you decide to bury Jeff after all. <laughs> Here, catch. <laughs> hey, uh, what are you? Twenty, was it? Oh, Dad, I can't tell you how grateful I am. It's please don't mention it. No, twenty grand. Twenty k? You are joking? No, twenty thousand pounds. You go back to prison. That's the plan. I've got another plan. I take all the money. I fly to Portugal, and I spend the rest of my life getting me golf handicap down. Dad, you can't do that. I can if I work on my backswing. <laughs> Look, if I'd have known that that's what you were going to do, I never would have helped you get out of prison. Yeah, kind of why I didn't tell you. Well, you'll never get out of the country unless you've got a fake passport. And where are you going to get? Oh God. <laughs> that's ready, Nicky. Thank you very much. Sorry, Lizzie, but I got us into this mess. It's only fair that I should run away and leave you to deal with it all on your own. Great. Why doesn't the entire circus run off and abandon me? I'm ready, Nicholas. <laughs> Take me away from this dump. So you are all abandoning me? No. David decided to stay. I couldn't fit him into my suitcase. <laughs> so, we all sit. £500 for whoever releases me from the cuffs. All right. I know this looks strange, but there's a very funny story attached to this. <laughs> See you around, Lizzie. Bye-bye, Penguin. No, no, Dad. I won't let you do this. I happen to love Circus Maestro and all the people in it. Except for Erasmus and Georgie, of course. And Uncle Jeff's a bit of a pain, to be honest. Although I do quite like the dog. <laughs> but we have a shot at this Olympics, and I'm not going to let you take that dream away from us. You will give me that money, and you will go back to prison. Wow. I was wrong about you. I thought you were weak, but you've got real fire in your belly. <laughs> OK, Penguin. I'll do as you ask. Will you? <laughs> of course I'll bleed and won't. See ya. <laughs> Oi, Dad! Ah! <laughs> and stop calling me Penguin! Get away from me! And what, Greg? I'm OK! Please, please help me! Travis, idiot! I knew it! The evil spirits have found a way in! <laughs> Jeff, I will release you from your torment! Oh, God, you leave him alone for oh. ten minutes! Lizzie, stand back! I will slay the monster! No, Moiko, don't! You heard him slay the monster! Slay! Ah. Oh, it's okay! Jeff's not really dead! We've just been pretending! Lizzie, are you telling me this whole funeral has been some kind of cruel lie? No, not a lie. A joke! Mm. A hilarious practical <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> you got me! <laughs> oh, you're such a prankster, Jeff. <laughs> oh, you know, I do my best. Hardy ha ha. 
Let's hear you chuckle when you're all nicked for wrongful imprisonment. Oh, no, you can't do that. We only got Dad out of prison so we could see his beloved circus one more time, didn't we, Dad? <laughs> oh, look at that. He's all choked up. Balls. There's something else going on here. Whoever tells me the real story, I'll let that person go. No, no way. We stick together on this. Oh, I'll tell you. Right. We faked my funeral to get Nick here out of prison to get the money to appear in the opening ceremony of the 2012 London Olympics. I'll teach you to joke around with me. You're going to prison for a long time. <laughs> it's true. Can we interest you in a bribe at all? We have money. No, you haven't. I'm taking this in too. Come on, Mercer. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> well, so, everything's turned out for the best. No, no, Auntie Helen. We've got no money, no Olympics, and we're all going to prison. On the plus side, at least Jeff's dead. No, I'm not. <laughs> and you said I could come back next week. That was before we made the big fuss about your funeral, Jeff. Now we'll have to wait till the heat dies down. Could take months. Does that mean Jeffrey has to stay dead? Actually, yes. Oh, wait till I tell Peter we can go camping. <laughs> Hang on, who the hell's Peter? Never you mind, Jeffrey. You're dead. <laughs> Just point out that none of this matters because we're all going to jail. You never know, Lizzie. That warden might let us off. He seemed very nice. Oh, Dad, brilliant. Would you just tell Helen here why your warden won't. Oh my god, he's run off with the money. <laughs> the eyes of the world were on London today for the opening ceremony of the 30th Modern Olympic Games. The ceremony, which lasted one and a half minutes, consisted of two clowns with sparklers and an elderly dog in a bowler hat. <laughs> Boris Johnson has been sacked. Light up your Christmas with the BBC. Go online to find out more about our festive comedy lineup, including the Royal Family and Gavin and Stacey. Just go to the Christmas website. Dramatic revelations in court as Lindsay takes the stand next on BBC One in Waterloo Road. Hello, I'm Selena Hinchcliffe with your 90 second update. Snow and ice are making it treacherous across the UK. In Cornwall, two people died and dozens were hurt after their coach skidded off the road near Penzance. At Glasgow Prestwick Airport, a plane overshot an icy runway. No one was hurt. Big problems for those getting away for Christmas. Roads in Scotland were described as their worst for 20 years. There are also long queues for Eurostar trains. They were known as legal highs, often used by clubbers, but now they're banned. The drugs include GBL, BZP and Spice. Dealers face a maximum 14 years. It was the hoax that made headlines around the world. Richard Heaney said his son was carried off in a helium balloon. Today, a US court jailed him for 90 days. Two big sports stories today. Craig Levine has been confirmed as Scotland's new manager on a two-and-a-half-year deal. And Michael Schumacher's coming out of F1 retirement to race for Mercedes next year. Hello, I'm Mike Ramsden with the latest from London. Hundreds of people in Barnet are facing freezing cold Christmas inside their homes. They've been without gas since Saturday, and now a surge in demand for electricity has caused the power to go off as well. Stuart Lubbock's body was found in a swimming pool at Michael Barrymore's home in Essex nine years ago. Today, his father said he's giving up his campaign for the truth because he's ill. Cloudy with light showers tomorrow, the high 7 degrees Celsius. Control freak Mac. Max is losing his grip next on BBC One at Waterloo Road. It's magic. Never ever in the history of show business has the phrase don't milk it, love, been more appropriate. Remember the fireman who helped cut me out of the house last Ooh, year? How could I forget? Took six and a half hours and a forklift to get you out. Oh, one, two, three. It's so cute, but I think we'll leave it there. I don't want to overload myself on the first day. A comedy lineup you'll love kicks off Christmas Eve from 8 on BBC One. Right now, peace is slipping away from us. Somebody's pushing this right to the edge. I want you to kill him. It's a detonator. How long have we got? 30 minutes. It's not too late to stop this. It is far, far too late. Spooks, the series finale, tonight at nine on BBC One. Ah! 
So the clock is ticking to nuclear destruction.